hey hello all uh, welcome to day four of 100 days of machine learning um, today we will be like discussing about uh, uh, again a very fundamental principle in image processing so I'm not jump starting in anything into in the into kind of like an algorithm in image processing or something rather we just trying to see what are the different uh, types of image data we typically deal um, in image processing use cases um, so fundamentally we can say that there are four types of image data we typically deal in, in, in image processing use case the number one the binary images two the grayscale images three the rgb or the two color images fourth is the floating point uh, uh, floating point uh, image okay so as the name very name suggests binary images has only two possible value that's on or off or zero or one so the the screen I've, I've just given a sample image of a sample binary image uh, sometimes like if you are already familiar with uh, image processing you may call it oh it looks like a uh, salt and pepper effect kind of thing yeah that's true it will either represent a, a dark space or a white space um, uh, in terms of what is represented or what is captured through the image capturing device here. Uh, the second type is called the grayscale or the intensity images. Uh, essentially, uh, uh, to a programmer, a grayscale image is a two-dimensional array that will contain like one numerical value to each pixel which is uh, represented uh, uh, in the picture. So you will see like a combination of black and white in the in the in the picture even though it may be a representation of a colorful event you will still see a varying intensity of dark and white or the black and white in the in the, in the pixel space uh, so that's a that's a grayscale image it's just don't need a much of explanation in terms of layman terms of what exactly uh, a grayscale image typically looks it's pretty uh, straightforward but to a computer program it is more or less like a two-dimensional a 2d array uh, which which gives all the information here the third is rgb the more layman term is a, it's a color picture that's what we can say or, or we refer it as a true color image uh, a true color image on rgb is a three-dimensional array uh, for a computer program uh, it assigns three numerical value to each pixel represented in the image so each value is corresponding to red, green, or blue in the in the image channel component respectively, which says that how the the colors which represent the image are combined uh, or generated from the from the basic um, colors uh, color schema. That's what it basically represents. So the bottom line is that like a true color image is a three-dimensional array with respect to image processing. So you are you have a 3D or a, when you're reading a true color or a color image in the, in the Python or any other programming language uh, per se. The fourth one is like uh, called the floating point. Uh, it differs from the image, uh, other image type which we discussed like the binary or two color or the intensity. They do not store any kind of a integer value for the corresponding color, but they store a floating point which uh, which is within the like in the given range defined by um, the floating point precision of a image in terms of the bit resolution which is really captured there so which essentially we can say that 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 bit resolution in the range of a like a floating point precision represents the intensity some of the some of the medical images like dicom um, will be following the floating point uh, uh, floating point style to capture it uh, capture it always so why why we have to really understand the data type before we jump into any kind of an image processing algorithm is a really valid question so essentially uh, it's quite important to understand what is the underlying data type which we captured for our image processing exercise number one so how that helps us is like you can 
create a pre-processing strategy how you are going to pre-process your your image data okay so in case of a deep learning algorithm we can understand like what's the number what's the kind of data you are getting how many channels there what input you need to do what normalization um, on how to derive the region of interest whether you need to do a color subtraction or something or we need to do the change of the channels like from a true color image to an intensity image transformation does it make sense or from an rgb image to yuv transformation to determine on all these factors understanding the type of data how it is represented is always useful so uh, whenever you receive a data type, a data set, image data set, try to determine the type of data falls under which category, then you can look into the pre-processing strategy. Probably in one of the forthcoming videos, I'll try to uh, explain different pre-processing strategy that can be applicable for various kind of this image uh, processing, Im image data type. So thank you very much uh, for listening and supporting my uh, my videos. So I'll be posting more uh, more on, on the image processing and, and allied machine learning technique in the forthcoming videos. Um, thank you and bye for now.